Hey, what's going on guys? Chris Travis here with Vandry.com. Uh, taking a look at the Moto 360 second gen. The uh, FedEx guy just dropped this off uh, not too long ago. And I just wanted to give you guys a quick unboxing, maybe a little hardware tour, show you guys what's the, uh, I guess, main features and <laughs> what's new versus the old model and stuff. So let's just go ahead and take it out of the box. We're going to remove this nice little cover. Super premium packaging, kind of goes along with that uh, now more expensive. I think it's like $50 more expensive than last year's model. Um, so I guess some of that money went towards the packaging. Take it out of here. Pop it right out. Uh, you can see here it's got this little plus. I mean, there's a lot going on here versus like last year's just cardboard uh, packaging. Little insert there. Uh, you can see here this is the watch. This is the one that I had uh, custom built on Motomaker.com or Motorola.com, and it's got the. It looks like a stainless steel casing to it. And uh, I opted for the black bezel. There's a couple different models or uh, colors and different textures, I guess. There's like a more expensive, something they call like neural or whatever. Um, along the side here, there's the power button, which has this uh, Motorola logo, the M. It's kind of hard to pick that up on camera, but it's a very, very cool, nice touch. And uh, overall, the button is just a lot more clicky than it used to be. I'm going to go ahead and take out this sticker here um, and power this sucker on. And while that's powering up, or booting up, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what else comes in the box. And so, it does have a wireless charger, wireless charging dock, and it's very similar to last year's model, except that it has these little tabs here on the inside. So I guess it positions a little bit different because I guess the size is different versus last year's model. Again, so uh, although Motorola says it's not really compatible with the old wireless charger, it should still work generally, probably just fine. Uh, they both use key wireless charging, so that's kind of um, kind of a thing. Should be okay. Uh, it comes with the the charger, the micro USB charger, but it's actually hardwired into. I don't know if you can see that, but into the actual charger itself. It's a 550 milliamp hour charger, so it's not letting out that much power. I don't know if that's going to keep the watch from charging as fast as it could. Maybe if you had a one amp charger or something, but. Uh, something to consider. I'm gonna leave this in here and just use one of my own chargers, but um, Other than that, that's about it as far as the box goes a couple of the normal documentation pamphlets and such Getting started. I'm gonna move this to the side and we can get back to the watch here. So uh, I'm not gonna lie to you. I've kind of already gone through a couple of these <laughs> unboxings um, Having a couple a little bit of trouble, but uh, I did get the watch synced and paired up to my Moto X Pure or edition right here and um, and it was pretty much a painless process. So it does have an ambient display mode, which you can see here. It goes, I believe it's colorless, and the resolution also goes down as well. So it almost looks very similar to, say, like the Pebble or something. It's like you could see the Jaggies. I mean, it's like almost 16 or 8-bit or something kind of a feel to it. But once you touch it, the color comes on and all the, like, nice graphics and stuff. Looks like there's a system update, but I can't apply it just yet. Um, this comes with a Snapdragon 400 processor, unlike last year's model, which had that horrible TI OMAP. I think it was like a dual core processor. I don't think cores matter too much when it comes to just a smartwatch, but the Snapdragon 400 processor not only makes the UI a lot quicker, snappier, more responsive, a lot more fluid with the UI, but it improves battery life uh, substantially. So even with ambient display mode, you should get a full 24 hours, which just was not possible with last year's model. Um, and if you turn off ambient display mode and just have it where you only can see the time if you, I mean, touch the screen or click the little button, uh, you can get up to probably like two days or something. So a definite improvement there. There's a couple different models. This is the 46 millimeter version, which comes with the 22 millimeter bands, leather bands here. And, um, <clears throat> Again, I should just note that, like, I mean, like, the quality, this is, like, 100% genuine leather, it's Horween, it's manufactured in Chicago, whatever, and it just, like, they're thicker than last year's model, they feel a lot more tough, I mean, the watch itself is substantially a lot more heavier, kind of makes it feel a little more expensive than last year's model, very, very cool, um, it's tough to say, but it almost seems like the back might be glass this time around instead of plastic, which if anyone of you um, owned last year's model had some like cracks and stuff going on just from the straps though. So, uh, the straps are super easy to replace. It's kind of one of the best parts about it. So let's see if I can't get one of these. They have these little switches here. So you can swap these suckers out. I mean, as easily as you can change your outfit. So I don't want to bend or break it, but, uh, 
oh yeah, then it just comes out a little side there. So super easy. I mean, you can see how there's no tools involved, anything, just your fingernail, and you can be <laughs> changing these leather straps like they're nothing. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, so other specs include uh, 500 target megabits of RAM, four gigabytes of internal storage, which is pretty much standard. Uh, we saw the same thing with last year's. It's got these little hinges here, uh, a little bit different. Dual microphones, optical heart rate monitor, um, dual microphones, which I mentioned. <laughs> it's IP67 water and dust resistant, so although you can get water on it, maybe if you're washing your hands or something, a mic Motorola does not recommend that you take it swimming, take it into the, the beach water or chlorine water or any of that stuff. Um, oh, cool. Um, uh, again, so this is the 46 millimeter version, which is $350. So all of the Moto 360 starts out at 300 bucks. That's for the smaller 42 millimeter version, which is just a smaller all-around watch. Um, and there's two versions of the smaller version. There's a men's and a women's. The women's has, these are a little bit more narrower and it only fits smaller 16 millimeter bands. And the women's also gets like an ex like a exclusive color, like rose gold or something. Um, something to consider. And uh, so the model I, I got here was the silver with the black chamfered. There's also, I mean, silver, there's gold, there's uh, a higher trim as far as that's concerned. It's called Micro Neural, and it's got, I mean, like little texture to it. That's an extra 20 bucks. And the gold case is an extra $20. Another something to consider. And uh, you can even bring the price up even more if you go for the metal bands available in um, silver, or gold, or black, and those are an extra $50. The leather is just standard and doesn't cost anything. So you can kind of see how the price is fluctuates substantially. So even though the, the, the watch itself, even the smaller version is $50 more than last year's model, I mean, the price can kind of get up there um, if you, depending on what trim and all the different customization options that you get. So um, again, this is just the Moto 360 second generation or 2015, depending on uh, how you want to look at it. With Fandra.com, I'm Chris Chavez. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.